um, Jennifer Durham, who is our Eastern Re Regional Representative, and she's going to be talking a little bit more specifically about uh, some of the values that we're going to be grounding ourselves in for this initiative. Hotep, everyone. Um, it is an honor and a privilege to be here with you um, this early evening, and I, and I also want to say it's a comfort. Um, to see you all. It, it makes me feel better um, in such troubling times. Um, and I've been um, tasked with sharing with you some principles or guideposts given to us by Elder Wade Nobles, who is one of our great African um, scholars, um, psychologists, healers, and past president of the Association of Black Psychologists. And first he, he um, tells us or encourages us or challenges us that now is the time for us to love up on one another. We need to love each other. We need to love ourselves. We need to give each other, um, be gentle with ourselves and with each other um, and be loving. Um, but then he gives us what he calls the five R's as guideposts for this challenging time. And the first guidepost, the first R is remember. And he is um, entreating us to remember whose we are in terms of whatever spiritual uh, place we come from, but also our ancestors. And that we are descendants of a people who have gone through much worse than COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And we need to remember that, that our ancestors um, pulled together and work through and got through and not only survived, but thrive. And because we are descendants from that magnificent energy, we need to remember that. The second R is remind. And he wants us to be reminded of the fact that the people that enslaved us and that energy and that spirit, it's still with us. We can have all of the laws and the equal rights, this and all of that stuff, but that energy that people have that, that would wish us to be enslaved, wish to take away our culture, wish to take away our psychological well-being, it's still here. And not so much to scare us, but to go back to the first R, to remember that we have always overcome it, but don't be reminded that it is still here. The, step, the third R is reframe. Um, and I think he, what he was speaking to here is we see a lot of our youth um, a lot of our people um, experiencing the shelter in place orders um, as punitive, as taking away our freedoms, our liberties. And actually he wants us to reframe, reframe that as protecting ourselves. That actually what we do when we shelter in place is we're re protecting ourselves and we're pro protecting ourselves for the next generation. So yes, it is, um, can be, taxing, boring, challenging, and all of those things, but it's actually a way for us to protect our community. Um, the fourth R is revitalize. And he's saying, and, and this really is, resonates with me as all of them do, is that take this as an opportunity to do some reflection. Yes, we're in, um, we're in with loved ones. Um, we're connecting, like I'm connecting with all of you right now. Some of you I don't even know. Um, but I'm glad to see you um, as part of the African African American family, the diaspora family. Let's reflect and try and revitalize. What things can we do better when things start to, to roll out a little bit differently? And then last R is reward. And I think this is really, we need to celebrate um, the good things that we're doing, the love that we have for each other, um, the opportunities that um, we are going to create out of this crisis. So um, Elder Nobles gives us those five arts and I strongly encourage everyone to use them as guideposts as we move forward. Thank you. Um, Dr. Durham, will you please share with everyone the word that he uses for loving up on each other? Zola, Z-O-L-A, Zola up, yes. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Dr. Collins? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Durham. That was a very powerful 
introduction into some of the things that we're going to be uh, returning to um, as we go through this initiative. Uh, so what we're next going to do is um, have a, a brief presentation from two of our um, student members, uh, Mary Morris and Leanna Taylor, uh, and they're just going to talk a little bit about some of the um, activities uh, and uh, gatherings that we have planned. So I'm going to turn it over. Hello, everyone. Um, I can introduce myself. My name is Leanna Taylor. Um, I'm a Binghamton alum, and I'm currently an AmeriCorps Fellow at Great Oaks Charter School. Hello, everyone. My name is Mary Morris. I'm so happy to be here. So great to connect with you all. I'm currently a second year in the NYU Drama Therapy Program. Um, and today, Liana and I just want to share with you all some of the things that you can expect out of the Harambe Initiative, some of the events that you can look forward to. So we'll go through a PowerPoint presentation with you all um, and let you know some of the descriptions of some of the events. So Dana, if you want to share the screen now, um, I think we can get started. Let's see. Um, sorry, a part of my difficult, bear with me, I'm having some technical issues here with my screen. So keep on. Perfect. This is just really great timing. I'm sorry, everyone, bear with me. Let me see if I can help. This is Ron. Okay. In the meantime, if you all haven't already, I would invite you all to follow our social media pages, the ways in which we will be distributing this information on the different events that we'll be having are on our Facebook pages, uh, which is the New York Association of Black Psychologists, and you can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter at NYABSI, which is PSI, and you can hear more information there. So it says my screen is being shared. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So is there anything I else I you need me to do? Um, no, that's good for now. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yes. Great. So you can jump to the next slide. Cool. So one of the events that we want to have for you all are community discussions, which will be held through Zoom forums to hold space for relevant issues at the intersection of COVID-19 in the Black community. So if you've attended some of the national events already, you've seen them talk about topics ranging from like, right now, what can we do for our middle school and high school children? Um, and so we want to hold space and hear from you all, what topics would you like for us to discuss, whether it can range from mental health, uh, physical health as it relates to COVID-19, or maybe it's just a community discussion to check in. Maybe you're wondering, okay, I have restless children at home. What can be happening? So we'd love to hear from you all via social media, or you can email us, and we will um, target our community discussions based on what the community needs. Um, something else that we will be having is we'll be doing resource sharing. And so right now, if you're part of our constant contact email list, you've been hearing, you've been seeing weekly email e-blasts from us that talk about different COVID-19 resources, whether it's financial, educational, psychoeducational, um, all as it relates to the Black community, even social justice resources. And so we want to keep providing that to you. So we also want to make sure that you're following our social media pages. We also want to provide opportunities for you all to share the resources that you may have for our community. And so please, please, please email us, post them on our Facebook page, DM us on Instagram, DM us on Twitter, and we will circulate these resources to each other. And lastly, as it relates to resource sharing, we also want to have a message board, which will be on our Facebook page. And so we'll pin different posts that will allow you all to check in. So maybe that's one topic. Another topic on our message board might be resource sharing. And so Facebook will definitely be an opportunity to message and connect with each other and not just us, but you can reach out to other people who are also posting and network and connect with them and find community. Next slide. Yes. So um, during this initiative, we also want to offer um, 
African-centered guided meditations um, led by our very own ABSI members, as well as members of the community. So um, especially during these times, we want to promote, promote mindfulness and unity as we set intentions for our daily lives. Um, so you'll see later on during this meeting, our president-elect Dana Collins will lead us in a community meditation and set the stage for um, our meditative practice that you'll see further on during our initiative. Um, we'll also be engaging in um, music. Um, music is an essential part of our culture and a major, major tool of healing. And we've witnessed um, already through social media and other platforms, artists and creatives are sharing their gifts and passions with um, large audiences through live streams on social media. And we would, you know, like to participate in that as well. So um, we want to draw on audiences for enjoyment and fellowship over music. And we would love to support um, artists in this community. So providing a platform for local artists to and, and creatives to share musical gifts and promote the spirit of this initiative, even if it's on a much smaller scale. And lastly, with music comes movement. So again, um, if you have, if you know any dancers, yoga instructors, etc., that would be willing to lead um, a live stream um, or a Zoom meeting as well, um, that would be really awesome because we would love to um, include that as a part of our initiative. So again, in the spirit of Harambe, we're calling on everyone to participate and join in. So. Um, definitely reach out to us through our social media pro, um, platforms and yeah. Um, next slide. Nice, so continuing in this creative aspect, another event we would like to hold part of the Harambe initiative initiative uh, is an event that incorporates griot and communal storytelling. And so right now we're navigating turbulent times and we want to be able to grasp onto hope. We want to be able to grasp onto spontaneity and creativity, things that help us navigate and find the small joys. And so we'd love to engage in telling some African-centered uh, traditional stories so that way we're able to use our culture, we're able to use our history, we're able to use our past to sort of like revive our spirits right now in this time. And also when we come together on a Zoom call to engage in storytelling, how might we also engage in a communal story? So what is the story that we tell right now as a community um, to foster what we need in this moment? And so engaging in our creative spirit, there might be some writers out there, there might be some actors out there who are interested, or maybe this is a time to embrace your own artists or your own inner creativity and try something new at this time. Um, we need it, we need to get up, engage in something new. So another option will also be webinars. And so the beautiful thing about uh, the New York chapter of Association of Black Psychologists is that we have so many wonderful professionals, so many wonderful psychologists, students and ally professionals who are sitting and holding and emanating so much knowledge. And we wanna hear from them, um, how they might be able to offer their wisdom and knowledge at this time. And so we'll be having presentations that talk about COVID-19 in our community, or maybe something that can assist or help us navigate these times as well. And so that will be another option for an event. And lastly, we'll also be engaging in some community rituals. And so if you were on at the beginning of the call, you heard Dr. Witten lead us through an opening ritual. And so how might we also have a Zoom call that sort of lays, um, pays homage to these African traditions and rituals again. So whether it's a spiritual journey that you may need at this time, an ancestral journey, um, African centered journey, just to pull on and hold on to what you need at this moment and maybe get connected to whatever you need to be grounded in this moment. Next slide. Okay, so again, um, yoga instructors, griots, musicians, dancers, we all need you. This is a communal effort. Um, Non-NYAB site members are welcome as well. Um, we encourage you to participate and facilitate events for yourself. So if you're interested, again, you can contact us through email, which is um, listed there, nyabsci one at yahoo.com, um, Facebook, um, our Facebook page, as well as our Instagram page, um, which is listed, but it's a little bit cut off. But again, we'll be providing those um, resources to you. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. And that's pretty much it. 
So the floor is now open for questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, and um, we want to hear from you guys. And when you speak, will you please let us know who you are and where you work and anything like that? We, we really, really like your input and ideas. Hi, this is uh, Dr. Harriet Richard. I am in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I um, am a member of ABCI, longtime board member, that kind of thing. Uh, but I really appreciate getting the notice about this, and I've passed it on to other people. And I think this is wonderful in terms of what you're doing and uh, opening it up for everyone. This is the time. This is the time. This is the time. So thank you very much. That's all I want to say. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Richard. I just wanted to say, um, Thank you to Mary and Liana for doing a really, really good job of describing what we're doing with Harambe. Thank you. I have a suggestion um, for an activity that's sort of on the griot side a little bit, but maybe if people can sign up um, to share a poem or I don't want to say an open mic, but to come to when we come together, maybe to bring something that a spoken word or a poem, either that you wrote or something that you've read and you would like to share with the group that would uh, help bind us together and also uh, help us get through this moment. And I wonder, since we don't have all that many people here, maybe people could introduce themselves. Yeah, that's a good idea. Take very long, because mm -hmm. you've already heard from a number of us. Um, Maybe I could just call on uh, Dr. Pat, Dr. Pat Jordan. Will you please introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Pat Jordan. And um, as you were thanking each other, I was thinking to thank Dr. Witten, who I met at a New York behavioral psychology conference early one Sunday morning. Because my first career was that of a high school math teacher in Long Island. And I was later in life at Hofstra University pursuing a um, PhD in clinical psychology made possible by Dr. A.J. Franklin, who was on the New York board with the director of the Hofstra program. So when we, when we tribute our elders and when we tribute um, um, those who've gone on, we've all had angels in this very difficult process of, of becoming psychologists, of becoming teachers, so um, um, Dr. Franklin, who certainly I saw at the gala where I saw Jamila for the very first time. So Jamila and Lisa, the only two people on this page that I am familiar with. But um, Dr. Franklin introduced me to um, a woman named Julia Vane, who's not at Hofstra anymore, but she accepted me on the spot simply because I said I knew Dr. Franklin. And then I went to a conference and there, and there was Lisa Witten, who was <laughs> definitely a, a a, a moving force in ABCI and New York Association of Black Psychologists, and she's one of those who are still here. So when I got the invitation, I said, yeah, I can go to that. Not, not only in my home, you know, I was also very interested. Um, so um, I thank you for this. I thank you for inviting me. Um, and I just appreciate Lisa's um, ongoing decades of devotion. So, and then, she, and then she messaged me to remind me, you know, to say, <laughs> So um, I'm it's just good proud to have you here, Pat. I'm, I'm proud of all of you. I um, and I'm, I was on the board once. Mm -hmm. I once paid, I once paid a life membership. I don't know what, whatever happened with those um, ideas. We'll find out about it. Yeah, I'm just very proud of you. Um, so I've, I've I left Roslyn High School. Um, and I started my part time practice and raising my daughter. Um, and um, um, Dr. Jordan. Yes. We'd love to hear more about you in a future session. Let's, let's let some other people introduce themselves right now, okay? And thank you for those kind comments you made about me. I appreciate it. Um, Jennifer, why don't you say a bit about where you are, just briefly, so we can um, know a little bit more about you. Okay, hello everyone again. Um, I am currently a uh, professor at 
the Derner School of Psychology at Adelphi University um, and the coordinator of the brand new PsyD program in school psychology. Great. And she stepped up to be our Eastern Regional Rep um, in, a, in a real crunch. Uh, so next I see some uh, people I'm very close to, Dr. Wanda witten Sharney and Mr. Carlos Rowe. Could you introduce yourselves brief briefly, please? Their screen seems to be frozen. No, there, there we go. Unmute. They need unmute. To okay. Um, can, you, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. I am Wanda Witten Cherney, and I am Lisa Witten's baby sister. <laughs> I am in Detroit, Michigan. I am a general pediatrician by training. I take care of children living with sickle cell disease, mm -hmm. and I run the Sickle Cell Disease Association of America, Michigan chapter, which is my, my father actually founded the National Association and our local chapter, and he started the clinic at Children's Hospital. So I've got some big footsteps to follow in. And I'll just say that um, taking care of a group of patients that is so neglected and so sick is very stressful. So I'm happy to be involved in this. And I actually do a workshop called Heal the Healer at our annual convention. So I'd be happy to share some of the techniques that we use there. And thank you, Lisa, for inviting me. And here's Carlos. Hi, I'm Carlos Rowe. <laughs> I'm just fortunate to be in the presence of uh, these Whitten ladies. <laughs> I'm in natural services, and I'm very interested in what your, uh, your objectives are today. Thank you. Um, uh, Tanya, Dr. Uh, White Davis, would you introduce yourself, please? Yes, good evening, everyone. Um, Tanya White Davis, I'm a clinical psychologist um, on the board of the New York Association of Black Psychologists. Um, I am a past president of the organization as well and currently the director of behavioral science, um, primary care behavioral science over at Montefiore Medical Center in the Department of Family and Social Medicine. Great. Welcome. I'm very happy to be here and very excited for this initiative. There's so much that we have planned that is going to be, um, I think, really needed, especially as we um, see just the amount of challenges and devastation to the Black community right now. It's going to be very important for us to pull together and to um, uplift ourselves. Um, so for us, by us, I think this is going to be amazing. Dr. Collins, why don't you um, continue calling on the others? Um, you can start with Dr. Giscom here. Uh, let's see. Uh, hi, hi. I think I unmuted myself. Yes, you did. Okay, thanks. So I, uh, I'm an organizational psychologist, and I have been an on and off member of New York ABCI, and I need to re-up and pay my dues. Um, so I'm an independent researcher and consultant right now, and one of my major clients is a nonprofit group called the Center for Talent Innovation. Uh, a few months ago, they released a major report on uh, Black employees in the U.S. workplace, and they looked at uh, it was a really good study that looked at LGBTQ status as it intersected with Black identity as well as um, millennial. Kathy, you know, your identity. screen has frozen. Oh. Um, let's see. So, Dana, maybe we should go on. Uh, is it still frozen? I can hear it. I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear and see you, actually. Yeah. It's not frozen. Okay. Oh, okay. Can I, I'm sorry. Just can I just quickly say I, I would love to get people's ideas about what issues are pressing among African American employees in this time of pandemic because I think that's the next project I'd be doing with with my um, with my client, and I will re up very soon. Wonderful. That's maybe something we can discuss in one of our uh, message boards because one of the things we want to do is promote community uh, conversation. So I will make a note of that. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, let's see, can we have um, Harriet Richard? Well, I introduced myself a little bit ago. Um, I do want to say I'm a professor at Johnson C. Smith University here in Charlotte. And um, also, recently, uh, there was a salute to Ar Arkansas psychologists 
done by the Arkansas Association of African American Psychology Professionals. And in it, it was a day long activity and they streamed it and it is on Facebook on the Association of, I think it's Black or African American Psychology Professionals. And uh, it traces the, from the first uh, person to receive, African American to receive a PhD in psychology, Francis Sumner, talks about Mamie Clark, all these people are from Arkansas, uh, to Robert Williams and the 300 letters he mailed out to universities and basically helped perpetuate psychologists, black psychologists, uh, as well as Terrence Roberts, who's part of the Little Rock Nine. Uh, that's maybe something that people may want to post or look at because you got some time now. Uh, anyway, to get back to the history, and let me tell you, it will inspire you. It made me feel like I was standing still. I was like, oh my gosh, I just need to do more. But anyway, um, that's all. And right now, I'm helping uh, institutions uh, faculty transition from face to face to online teaching. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rod, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. I. Just give me one second. I am Rod Hurley. I am a um, longtime mem student member of ABSI. I'm currently a third year psychology student at the CUNY Graduate Center. Uh, Jamila? Good evening, everyone. I'm Jamila Codrington. I'm also one of the current board members of uh, New York ABSI and also a past president of the New York chapter. I am really excited. I always do a head count of um, events and when we have more guests than board members, I always feel good about that. <laughs> and so we have succeeded in that tonight. Um, I'm so excited to see that we have students, we have, you know, old members, uh, we have old board members. I see Darlene is on the call. Um, if this is Gloria Scott from NABSW, um, love the idea that we are um, working together um, inside of this uh, process. And even um, Dr. Sherney, I wanted to say it's beautiful to actually uh, meet you virtually because uh, you may not know this, but uh, maybe about 10 years ago, I sought out help from uh, Lisa when I was working with the sickle cell thalassemia patient network. And uh, we were charged with doing pamphlets. And she said, I am gonna reach out to my sister. She can give you some good information. Um, and I can't remember what happened, whether she, I talked directly to you or she gave me information, but I used your work and um, the website to help build out um, the Sickle Cell Thalassemia Patient Network, um, their psychoeducational pamphlet um, that I think they're still using today. So it's just a wonderful, um, way of being connected and us using the gifts that we have in the service of our people. So happy to be here. And this is Wanda. I just want to thank you for that shout out. And if anybody has any um, need for information about sickle cell disease, I am your woman. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, Sharice, would you like to introduce yourself? I was, okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, hi, my name is Sharice Brown and I'm here on the invitation of Mary Morris. Thank you so much. I'm a licensed creative art therapist, a drama therapist in particular. Um, I work with uh, incarcerated teens, uh, the ages of 12 and now with the raise the age law to uh, 17 years old. I'm very concerned about, at this facility, I'm very concerned about the way the um, spread of the coronavirus has been happening at this facility. Um, we uh, are not considered a shelter in place um, facility, which I'm, I don't know, I'm just very discouraged about the whole thing. So I'm just, I'm happy to be here tonight because this has been very uplifting. Um, I also have um, 
a family member who was taken off a ventilator and who um, now is transitioning. So I'm asking for prayers and um, I'm just, I just needed this um, tonight. So I really, really thank you. And I'm looking forward to um, what you, you know, what the plans are for, you know, for the future for the initiative. Thank you so much. So sorry to hear about your thank you. relative. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're so happy to have you. Um, Karen Rout? Yes. <laughs> Hi. Um, I am uh, one of Lisa's partners in crime, Lisa Witten, Dr. Lisa Witten. And uh, more recently, a partner in crime of her little sister, Dr. Wanda Sherney, and um, just here to be to support Wa uh, Lisa today and find out what you're thinking. Uh, we get together on the on a Zoom call every Saturday morning uh, during and have done it for the past month because of our um, because of the Corona virus. And so I'm here to learn and and see what you guys are doing. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Okay, uh, Harriet Richard, would you like to introduce yourself? I think, I think Harriet had a chance to introduce herself. You did, okay. Um, unless yeah, there's something else you'd like oh, to add. I see, I'm sorry, things keep moving okay. around and I, there's so many people, which is wonderful. Yeah. That I that. Okay, uh, Tanya, um, Bev, would you like to introduce yourself? So. Oh. You came off mute, then you came on again. Okay. I'm Marjorie Beverly Lashley, um, a past president of New York ABCI. I'm also a clinical developmentalist and I teach at Mega Everest College. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Britton Williams. Hi everyone, I'm so happy to be here. Um, thank you, Mary, for the invitation. Glad to be a part of this. Um, so I'm a drama therapist, licensed creative arts therapist based in New York. I have a private practice and I'm an adjunct professor at the program in drama therapy at NYU. Um, it's really exciting to hear about the programming that's coming out, you know, especially um, thinking about the creative aspects aspects that have been considered here in the midst of all that's going on and thinking about how we can use our creative ancestral um, knowing and expressing to um, find our way through this particular time and also very much resonating with what Sharice you were saying a lot of my concern right now are some of uh, our communities that are often dismissed disregarded um, that are being compoundingly impacted um, so I think opportunities to come together with other professionals, with allied and aligned um, work is so important to see how we can work together to work through. So really pleased to be here. Okay, wonderful. Um, Dana, your mic is still off. Still muted, okay, okay, great. Sharice uh, Brown. Therese. We did, okay, again, the, all the shifting around. Okay, uh, Darlene, before? Um, hello, I am a um, past board member, both local and national. Um, I'm a um, full-time faculty member at Hunter College, a social community psychologist, and I'm, I'm so glad that you all are doing this. Um, one of the concerns that I have as a result of this coronavirus is seeing educational inequity, how my students have been affected by us moving to online, how many students don't have access to computers, don't have access to internet, and, and, and the toll that is taking on their education. Yes. I mean, that, that is a real concern. I just, just a comment, because I mean, I think for us, it's trying to make sure we reach the lowest common denominator, which for us has been their, their phones. 
and in terms of then altering things and having things asynchronously so that they will not have to be Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on at the same time and some people are still trying to teach the same class at the same time for the same hour yeah okay. but what i found is some of my students because i was asking them do you want me to <clears throat> move I, I i could you know um record the sessions they yes. wanted us to be together mm -hmm. they wanted, I know it, they yeah it's wanted, a fine line. yeah right. and so it's being recorded so that those who don't want, can't be there or don't want to be there, they can look at and listen to it later. But for those who, you know, want us uh, to be there together, because um, for some of them, that's the most normal the lifeline. that they feel at the, yeah. yeah, when we're there yeah. um, to that hour, what, hour and 15 minutes. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. say you always have to judge the class. You always yeah. have to work it out so that, that they are comfortable with what you do. And if yeah. you have to, talk to them or from the earliest time of when it happened to now you need to reach out to those students individually i'm sorry okay y'all go on <laughs> no, that's <laughs> that's true. Definitely, yeah. you know one of the many ways that we are being you know uh more impacted by all the adjustments we're having to make and i think this is something that warrants more conversation that we can come back to during this initiative thank you so much uh, let's see, uh, Gloria Scott. Hi, I don't know why I, I don't have my picture up here, but anyway, I'm Gloria Scott. I'm from the Association of Black Social Workers, New York City chapter. I'm the uh, chapter president. And I want to thank Lisa for this invitation. And hi, Jamila. Yes, it is me. <laughs> <laughs> Gloria. Yes. And so um, I'm happy for this invitation. It's always good to get together with people who are thinking the same way, who are committed to our community and doing work to help others. So um, I'm happy to be here. I look forward to more participation. And sorry, I was a little late uh, tuning in. So, um, but I look forward to it. Thank you, Gloria. So happy to have you. And Constance. Constance, are you still here? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hey, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, uh, I'm a clinical psychologist in Chicago, former president of Chicago chapter, and currently on the ethics committee and a, formerly a board member for the national office. I missed a lot of the presentation, but I do want to catch up. Lisa invited me and I'll be bugging her to get all the details because I really do believe that whatever you guys are planning that I want to be a part of. So I look forward to working with my colleagues. Thanks, Constance. You're welcome. Wonderful. So it looks like that is everybody and- uh, I'd just like to squeeze in, I didn't get to say that I'm on faculty at SUNY College at Old Westbury <laughs> in Long Island. Thank you. Okay. And I'm sorry. I, I completely forgot to introduce. I was so excited to see everyone. I was just doing shout outs. Um, I am a counseling psychologist and I am at a outpatient mental health facility in the Bronx. I'm a supervising psychologist um, at ASTA Services for Children and Families. And I'm also adjunct faculty at New York Theological Seminary. And I have a private practice that incorporates um, African-centered healing practices, the arts, and spirituality into the healing process. Called the Silly Services. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, so it was just so wonderful and so encouraging to hear from everyone. Um, hear the reasons that you're you are here hear the things that you're passionate about it feels really comforting and really encouraging that there's so much support and so many great minds um, coming together for this initiative so um, we really look forward to continuing to be in community with all, you all thank you so much there really aren't enough words to say thank you to express my gratitude um, so to sort of uh, close us out, I, I just wanted to just um, return to uh, to talk a little bit about uh, the Association of Black Psychologists and what we're about. Um, uh, we see our mission as um, 
missiony mission and as the uh, I'm sorry mission and destiny as the liberation of the African mind uh, empowerment of the African character and um, enlightenment and illumination of the African spirit so uh, we uh, fulfill our mission by promoting and advocating for um, the profession of African psychology, um, influencing and um, affecting social change, uh, developing programs uh, whereby psychologists of African consent, uh, I'm sorry, dissent, uh, can assist in solving problems of Black communities and other ethnic groups. Um, and um, in terms of the uh, New York chapter, in addition to the um, Harambe initiative, uh, we have um, other initiatives we're involved in right now for uh, COVID-19 relief efforts. And I wanna just mention those briefly. Um, one is um, a, a collaboration with the Institute for the Black World, uh, which is launching a listening line for Black first responders. So the purpose of that is to provide a hotline that the Black first, uh, first responders can call just to get some culturally grounded support and uh, connection to resources. And we are still looking for uh, volunteers to serve as listeners. So if you are interested in volunteering your time, please do get in contact with us via uh, email or any one of our social media channels, platforms. Um, and then we are also collaborating with Black Girls Run, which is a uh, nationwide organization um, that promotes uh, physical health of uh, Black women. Uh, we are going to be um, holding some virtual support spaces um, for their members. And we are uh, looking for a co-leader to uh, facilitate with that. Um, another thing that I should have mentioned uh, that's very important is that the National um, Association of Black Psychologists, the, the national, um, national, is um, going to be um, offering mm -hmm. virtual healing spaces um, for those who could use the support um, at this time. Um, they, uh, we are looking for facilitators to lead those groups as well. So if you are interested in that or know somebody who is, please get in touch with that, uh, with us about that as well. Okay, so um, we're going to start to draw our launch to a close and we're going to do that by um, engaging in a um, community meditation. Um, meditation is uh, an important part of our spiritual practice and it really helps to sort of ground and center us. Um, and for this particular meditation, I want us to call to mind some of the things we have been talking about tonight. Um, one of the things that's come up a number of times is uh, connection to each other and connection with an our ancestors and being very thankful uh, for that. Um, so there's been a lot of remembering and a lot of honoring. Um, so for this meditation, I want us to focus on having gratitude for our ancestors and really um, being filled with that sense of gratitude and really just leaning into what that feels like and what that does for us. So what I wanna do is I want everyone to um, find a comfortable position in their seat. Um, and that might be um, sitting cross-legged, it might mean uh, feet flat on the floor, it might um, be standing, especially if you have pain or mobility issues, but just get into a position, settle into a position that you're gonna be comfortable in for the next just three or so minutes, okay? Um, as you settle into that position, I want you, I'm going to invite you, if it feels comfortable, uh, to gently close your eyes. If it doesn't feel comfortable or safe to close your eyes, that's okay. You can just sort of gently focus them um, um, on a focal point ahead of you. Okay. 
Okay. So as you've done that, um, just start to find your breath. Start to focus on the breath. And that may, might mean that you are focusing on the rising and falling of your chest. It might mean that you are feeling your breath going in and out of your nostrils or right above your lips. Just take a moment to center yourself in your breath. So after you have found your breath, um, call to mind an ancestor for whom you feel grateful. And just imagine yourself in that presence, in their presence feeling that sense of gratitude. Notice where you feel it. Where in the body are you sensing the feeling of gratitude? Allow yourself as full as you can to just feel immersed in this feeling. And as you're experiencing this, know that gratitude is such a healing force. And it's so important, especially in difficult times, in times of trauma. It can be so easy in these times to remember what we've lost, what we don't have, but turning our attention back to gratitude tells us and keeps us centered in what we do have. And just take a few more moments to feel that gratitude. Okay. When you're ready, you can open your eyes and we'll come back together. And we will say, okay, so it looks like people are about back. So I, again, I, I know that I've said thank you a hundred times already, and it doesn't really express what I'm feeling, but I really am feeling so much gratitude and so much love for all of you. Um, we will be in communication about what is next for the um, Harambe Initiative. Um, please do follow us on our social media platforms. Um, please visit our website. We'll also be sending out um, information uh, to those who are on our mailing list. If you're not on our mailing list or you're not sure, um, please enter your information in the chat box and we'll make sure that you are at it. And I Thank just want to add that we have an associate membership category. We, we do not have to be a psychologist or a psychology student to be a member of New York ABCI or the Association of Black Psychologists. So please check us out on our website. We welcome all of you. And I wanted to be sure, I was off for a while because of my connection. Um, did Britton Williams have a chance to introduce? I did. Thank you for checking in. I did. Sure. Nice to okay. be here. Indeed. Very good. Okay. I um, just make a brief announcement. 
So um, tomorrow, there's going to be another really powerful event that I want to um, invite everybody to. It's actually a, a state of the emergency, uh, black, state of the emergency, black global community town hall meeting. Um, it's got a number of um, national members from the Association of Black Psychologists involved. It's um, coordinated by Dr. Maria Cambon and her daughter, Nataki, and her husband, Kamal Kamban. And it's actually gonna be um, a three hour live event that has a intersection of healers, activists, educators, um, mm -hmm. artists. Um, it just runs the gamut that are gonna be talking about what should we be doing collectively to heal and what is our way of planning and building for a better future. Um, and so I want to invite, I'm putting everything in the chat, but you do have to register. It's free, but um, you do have to register, I think by 1.30 tomorrow, just to get the actual information to your email to join the, um, the live virtual um, network. And I'll also put the flyer in the chat for anyone who's um, interested, but Thank you so much for sharing that, Jamila. That is a very important and powerful event and uh, more opportunity for fellowship. Thank you. Okay, well, that was all for tonight. Again, we look forward to continuing to be in community with you. Asante Sana, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye now, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Thank you. Oh no, why am I still on? <laughs> That actually went really well. Yes. It really, really did. Yeah, I'm really happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I... Uh, all over. Hmm? Yeah, we just have to sort out the, the technical part of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so Dana, you and I can get together yeah. and, and start out that, make sure yeah. that we can share the hosting going forward. Um, and Donna, you cool. and Mary threw down. That was, oh my God. Yeah. Amazing. I almost yeah. wanted to cry. I really did because it was just I had to shout okay. out, for sure. I had to shout out. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Really yeah, you guys did a really good job um, presenting and being engaging and mm -hmm. and it just had a really good vibe to it. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And um, I also like the slides that you made, and I'm going to post those on the, I created a Harambe page on the website. It doesn't have much on it yet, but I'm going to use those slides to, 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 um, to create the content. And then as we do each event, I'll do a post for the event. Um, mm -hmm. But since we have the comms team here, basically, I'd like to set up a time where we can meet and go over um, website access so I can show all of you how to how to make posts on the website. It's really, really easy and simple. So, um, so that we can, so any one of us, when we create content for one of the platforms, we can then just quickly create a website post as well. Just simply by copying whatever text or anything you have and just pasting it onto a, a page on the website and hitting publish. It's as, honestly as simple as that, but I'll go through it um, and share my screen and stuff. If we can set up a, a time to do a Zoom meeting sometime in the week, that would be great. Okay, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Uh, why don't we do it during our th the Thursday, Thursday meeting? Perfect. Yes. Yeah. Um, now I know we've been meeting at eight. Does, is eight the best time for for everyone, or would another time be good? Eight is fine, or maybe eight thirty but definitely not earlier. Oh, okay. Um, it, is, it can work. It can work. Let's, let's stick to eight. Let's yeah. Stick to eight. Okay. Later, the later it gets, the more I'm not 
thinking well. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I want to be done with the night. Okay, great. Um, okay, so I we're gonna finish in just a minute. Um, one of the things I wanted to do is make sure that we have a we're gonna have a Facebook discussion, a post. Uh, don't remember what that is was now. Does anybody remember what the topic of the post the this uh, the discussion was gonna be? was going to be um, uh, mental health questions and answers, I think. Is that, is that what you're talking about? The no, first? So you're talking about the next event. Oh, what are yeah, you talking about? Yeah, but, um, but that's that a that message board. Right. Yeah. I don't think we ever came up with topics on the spot. I was naming some random topics, but I don't think. Yeah, I think, I think that like for the first one, it should just be something really pretty general, like. Be like a check-in. Yeah, let us know how you're doing and you know, what are your, um, what are your challenges and what are your, what are the good things that are, that are happening? Something like that. Challenges and, and. What's the joy that you're holding on to? Yeah, exactly. I was looking that's, for the right word, but I like that. That's very good. Okay, perfect. Okay. So when will that um, post be made? Are we starting tonight or are we starting tomorrow? Oh, I think tomorrow. I fine. think tomorrow too, yeah. Okay. And then once we make that Facebook post, then we just you can send out an, an e blast saying, you know, the and have a link to the Facebook post in the e blast and then I'll put it on the website and as well and and just have that live on Facebook for a few days and, and push it. Sounds good. Um, Rod, I, I wanted to um, squeeze in, but I, I, maybe we can do it next time. I just wanted to acknowledge that beautiful logo you created for us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So cool. Thank we you. should um, give you credit for that somewhere in the, um, on the page or somewhere, you know, because it's, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, and on, to be honest, I, I, the idea came from what Liana started with the hands, so Liana definitely had the hands idea and I just took that and, and worked with that. So it's both of us and okay. you know, I think that all of us working together is working really well because I was struggling before, before we came together as a unit like this and before Mary and Liana came on board. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I th think that it's really a good team effort for sure, yeah. but definitely. thank you. Agree. It was really, really exciting and inspiring, and I'm looking forward to continuing. Yeah, I'm really, really happy to have Mary and Liana working with us. Yeah, and and such a difference. Thank you. Uh, and, Dana. and Dana, shout out to Dana, though. Yes. I mean, <laughs> yeah, Dana. Right. Dana, you're doing a great <laughs> job leading for sure, and you just. <laughs> <have to, laughs> You just stepped up and stepped in and really filled a gap that was that was growing in our organization, not just in terms of personnel, but you're like a glue that brought a lot of energy that helped us even feel more inspired to do things that we were kind of getting fatigued with before. So you really brought energy to the organization that that we can't we can't say thank you enough for. Thank you. Yes. Oh my gosh, thank you. Yes. May that's that's thank you and three. <laughs> thank you and what? Three, a, a oh, Ghanaian oh, language. Oh, that's so cool. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I am so moved. Okay. Oh, just one last thing, Dana. Since since I was signed in as you, <laughs> yeah, I I was getting all of the the chat the messages that were meant for you. So that's why I was sending you the messages in text. Oh, so I I'll, yeah. Okay. So before I close out. I'll make sure I save all of the email addresses that were sent to you and pass them on to you. Okay. Oh, so I'll download the transcript of the chat um, from this recording and you'll have copies of all the messages that were sent, even private messages. Okay, okay. cool. Oh, should we stop recording it now? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. Um, Dana, when you do download the recording, I'm wondering if you can at some point send a screenshot um, just of an image of the event. Um, something that I've been noticing that our social media pages could use more of are like pictures and like human life. Yeah. And so that way it's not just all flyers. And so that way we can post the screenshot of the event 
to talk, like do a recap of like the community that we had tonight. Um, also any like throwback Thursday type pictures if you wanna put in our like group folder so that we can post pictures from past events. Um, if there's oh, any sure. video footage. Yeah, we definitely really have that. <laughs> AB side through the years. Yeah, just, I have thousands and thousands of pictures. Yeah, so that'd be dope if you could upload them to the um, communications folder and then Leanna and I can start adding photos to the flyers and stuff. Okay. Sounds great. Wonderful. Okay, folks. All right. Nice work. All right. Beautiful. All right. Thank you all. Have a good night. Tomorrow at the board meeting. Yes. Home.